Big time fight at 205 between a couple of primary strikers, and this really kind of previews our main event. Really looking forward to that fight. You got Reyes and Prakasha, but Iwan Kutsalaba representing Moldova, taking on Dustin Jacoby, the former glory kickboxer, the former UFC fighter. He had the long layoff, and then he came back, and he's looked great in his last two fights. Yes. Picked up a big win over Justin Ledette, a primary boxer, finished him, and then his last time out, picked up a narrow decision win over Max Grecian. Yes, he had the two knockdowns. Did Grecian look pretty good? Did I score for Grecian? Well, it doesn't matter now because Dustin Jacoby won. But for Jacoby, very, very good striker. Moving forwards, moving backwards. And if he's in a clinch position, you still favor Jacoby there. Is a wrestling an issue? It can be, but Grecian wasn't really able to do a whole lot with it in that fight. Like, I kind of thought that he would. And now Jacoby's taking on Iwan Kutsalab. And if you look at it in his last five fights... Really weird level of competition. He gets a win over Gatchimrat Antigula, finishes him. Then he loses to Glover Teixeira by submission. Did he look good early? Like he everybody did. does against Glover Teixeira. Yeah, he did. And then he didn't. He beats Khalil Roundtree and finishes him. He loses to Ankaliyev, but his head movement, but he was faking it. And then he goes out there and he loses to Ankaliyev again, somewhat predictably, but I get it. The fight fans didn't think so, but it happened again. So for Kutsalaba. He has, and I'll do the air quotes, two TKO losses in his last two fights. The second one was pretty pronounced. He comes in against another striker in Dustin Jacoby. It's a weird fight. It really is because it's like, okay, is Kutsalaba a top 15 fighter on his best day? And is he not on his worst day? Maybe. Is Dustin Jacoby a top 15 fighter? I don't know. I really don't. Is Il Kutsalaba just light heavyweights Mike Perry? It's just a question I'm going to throw out there. And I didn't hit Craig with that before. If that's the answer, then Jacoby might run over him. But you know what I mean? Like, it is a real question because this is something we say about Mike Perry. Yes, he's known for the striking. He's known for the wild striking and the knockout power. But what is he decent at at the end of the day? He's got decent wrestling. And if he used it more, he'd probably win more fights. It's almost like he's a lot like Ian Kutalaba, who, wait, he's been wrestling for the majority of his life, but doesn't use it in his fights. It doesn't make any sense to me because that's a fact that they're going to hit you with as he walks out to the cage. This man's been wrestling since he was a child. But you would never think to see it in his fights. The only time that he has used his wrestling was in the Jared Cannonier fight, which, oddly enough, was a really good win for Kutalaba back on his record a former fight of the night but even in the win against Gadjimar and Antigula you did get to see a little bit of the grappling side of Kutalaba yes did he try to go out there and take his head off in the first 30 seconds yes did that not work yes did Antigula have a little bit of success well yeah he did but the real thing that I care about in that fight was Antigula got on top of Kutalaba and Kutalaba ended via knockout in the first round he was still able to get back up to his feet and show a certain level of defensive grappling where yes is he going to be able to get out from underneath Glover Teixeira well no but I think we've seen that pretty much every fighter in the UFC would have a really hard time getting out from underneath Glover Teixeira so I can't fault Kutalaba too much for that performance I just gotta think at the end of the day Kutalaba is gonna be really happy he's not looking across and seeing Megamed Ankaliyev in this fight because Ankaliyev whether you thought whatever you thought about the first stoppage was he out on his feet was he not stylistically that fight was just a really bad matchup for Kutalaba because Kutalaba what's he good at what would you say his black belt skills are I would say his power is at a black belt level if you will and that's really it at the end of the day so a guy who throws big looping shots is going to struggle against a very technical striker on the outside. Dustin Jacoby has some of those strikes and really some of those techniques that I do think will give Kutalaba trouble, especially early on in this fight when they're both fresh, because that's the thing with Kutalaba. I feel like his power is almost a bit of a curse at a certain point where Paulo Costa, yes, he has big muscles and yes, he's a power puncher and a knockout puncher. His technique's still pretty good at the end of the day. He can still throw good technique. He can still throw the wheel kicks and all those crazy wild things that you really don't expect from a guy of his size. Kutalaba can't do any of that. I really think that he's a fighter who goes in there knowing how much power he has and really wants to demonstrate that. So if Kutalaba comes into this fight just throwing those wild Mike Perry-esque bombs, I really do worry about him. So for Kutalaba, fight in and fight out, I really do wonder just A, how good is his training situation and B, how high is his fight IQ? Because really everything about his career comes down to those two things. Because if Kutalaba can get with a good camp that focuses or at least gets him to focus a little bit more on the wrestling, gives him a tone down the aggressive 
progression a little bit and to do kind of like what we saw Justin Gaethje do in the second half of his career after he suffered his stoppage losses, then I do think Cute Laba could get into that top 15 again. And I do think he could have that kind of Mike Perry butterfly effect where we do see the best version of his career. But if he goes out there and loses, and especially by stoppage to, just, to Dustin Jacoby, I do think he might fall into that Perry category where at the end of the day, you have an exciting fighter, but that's about it. If you look at Iwan Kutsalaba and his Instagrams, and if you look at Kamaru Usman last weekend, who did Usman have in his corner? Francis Ngannou. Who did Iwan Kutsalaba have on his Instagrams? Uh, Francis Ngannou. So, does that have any play here? No, it's just the fact that he's been training, getting ready for this one in Vegas. You like to see it. For Dustin Jacoby, a little bit better in terms of striking accuracy. You can kind of go by these numbers a little bit, but 46% compared to 39% for Kutsalaba. Bit of a higher work rate out of the Moldovan. And as far as takedowns are concerned, you've got Kutsalaba that's a little bit more on average used to taking people down. If we look at the odds for this fight, a little bit of a surprise. Kutsalava open to minus 140, down a little bit, minus 136. For Jacoby, open to plus 120, at about a plus 110. And if we have a look at the topology votes, the surprise to me is a surprise to you. 927 total votes, 66% Kutsalava, 78% by knockout. For the 30... 4% that I have Jacoby, 60% by knockout. Matt, what are you thinking here? It's a weird fight. And honestly, I expected the topology votes to be much more skewed towards Kutalaba just because he is kind of the fan favorite, if you will. Like, it's not that Dustin Jacoby's not a popular fighter, but Kutalaba does kind of have that weird, like, MMA myth around him where still, if he does hit you with that power, and if he does walk across that cage and do that real intimidating, like, neck slice thing, if all those things fall into place, the Kutalaba can... Uh, uh, I don't want to use the word he has star potential, but you know what I mean? Like, he's more than just an unranked 205-er. He does have somewhat of a name. And I, I said this to you before this video started, where I feel like this could be one of those fights similar to Anthony Smith, Devin Clark, where it's like, really? You guys think this is the guy who I'm finally going to go down against? Like, Anthony Smith had just fought top levels of competition, and yes, he wasn't always beating them, but at a certain point, it's like, okay, I'm still better than these guys. I think Q Lava is going to have one of those performances where it's like, okay, guys, I'm better than Dustin Jacoby. It's nothing against Jacoby because I do think his technique and his style is going to be tough for Kutalaba. I think he is going to crack him and I think he is going to maybe not hurt him, but at least force him to show a wrinkle that we haven't seen yet. So I am going to ever so slightly pick Ian Kutalaba, but I still, I really don't know what to think about his career just moving forward. Because if I'm saying you're like the light heavyweight Mike Perry, that really tells you guys a lot about the guy. Technique usually beats power. I hate to bet against technique. I will ever so slightly go with power in this one. And it's a weird one. But again, if Kutsalab is able to mix in the takedowns, if he's able to really show his full game plan, if he's been training extreme couture, I do like all of those things for Kutsalaba. So I'm ever so slightly going to edge him as well. But I'd really like to know what people are thinking down below in the comments section. Who are you going with? We're both ever so slightly going with Kutsalaba to get the win. But if you're going with Jacoby, give us a good answer down below. Keep it locked in with Fight Night Picks. we got a great light heavyweight main event. Dominic Reyes taking on Yuri Prahasha. So stick around for that. Like I said, keep it locked in with Fight Night Picks. As we always say, let's get into it.